All right, hello YouTube fam. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today I got one that I'm super excited about because we're reviewing the brand new 2300 PSI 1.2 GPM electric pressure washer from Bauer available at Harbor Freight. Now this is a brand new pressure washer that just came into their lineup. Um, it's one of those items that, you know, it seems like Harbor Freight's trying to up their, up their game a little bit and offer more and more quality products. And Bauer is one of the lines that they're doing that with. Um, so I'm excited to pop this thing open and share it with you guys. Like I said, it is brand new. Um, I, when I checked yesterday, there was only five reviews on Harbor Freight's website. Um, so this is, it, I'm trying to film this, this video so you guys can get a real good idea of what to expect if you could decide to get this product. So let's get this thing unboxed and check it out. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing opened up. Just gonna use my razor here so we can get this thing popped open. Nice big red box. Let's see what's inside. Alrighty, so right off the bat, the main part of the unit is actually sitting right here. Now this thing looks very, very similar to, uh, let's see here, the Ryobi 2300 PSI unit. Uh, also looks very similar to the DeWalt unit. Now, with the Ryobi unit, it, it was, did not have the total stock system, so we'll test this one and see if it does have it um, or not, or if it's pretty much the same as that Ryobi. So let's go ahead and pull this guy out. And see what else we got. All right, so then we have warranty card, instruction manual, High pressure hose, and this one does look like it's gonna be a, yep, kinks, so not super great. Uh, this is a 20 foot hose, so I'm definitely gonna recommend you guys upgrade this hose, because this thing is, um, it, it's short and it kinks, so not my favorite. Next up we have the gun attachment with the wand, or the, the actual pressure washer gun with the wand attachment. Uh, the wand attachment does have a nice quick connect at the end. Um, so all good there. All right, so along, along with the packaging of the pressure washer gun is a turbo nozzle. So we'll pop that out. And it's pretty standard turbo nozzle, uh, a little bit different looking than some of the other ones, but you can hear it's basically a loose piece inside so that the fan comes out in a spiral and uh, really does a great job cleaning um, on hard surfaces. So. And then after that, we just have the uh, cage part of the, of the machine. This is the backing piece. As you can see, it does have, or come, actually this is nice, that it comes with um, your hose carrier, gun carrier, and all that kind of stuff already pre-assembled to, to the unit, which is really nice. Um, you have a, a soap dispensing nozzle, a 15 and a 25, and then a spot for the turbo nozzle. So we'll go ahead and put that there now. And um, yeah, it's, it's a good looking, oops. I might've pushed that through a little bit too much. Let's see if I can get that back in there. There we go, nice and easy, and just let it sit there. We don't have to go crazy with it, I pushed it through. Uh, it is a nice kind of dark graphite color, uh, a little bit darker than some of the other comparable units, um, which I like. It looks, looks really good, looks super clean. Um, so let's go ahead and assemble this. All right, so first things first, just gotta get this thing out of the bag here. Um, okay. So right off the bat, guys, you have the unit itself. We have a soap dispensary right in the front, which I don't ever use personally. I like using a foam cannon instead. This allows for the solution to go all the way through the hose, and I don't like that because once you switch over to just pure water, there, you have to get all that residual stuff out, and I don't like that. So I always prefer putting a foam cannon at the top of the lance uh, of the wand. Um, you can get them with a little quick connect, so it plugs right in, and it works way better, especially the foam cannon really lathers up the vehicle. Uh, we'll be testing that as well with this one so you guys can see. Um, the on-off switch is right on top. Simple switch here. Um, you do have a nice long power cord and it does have the ground fault interrupt uh, uh, outlet on it. 
So the wheels on the side. Oh, interesting. I thought they were gonna be a hard plastic, but they're actually, let me see if I can zoom you guys in for that. They are a hard plastic hub to it, the actual wheel piece, but the tire, I don't know if you can see that, but I can push it in. It's like a, it's like a foam. So that's nice. It feels really strong, but it feels like it's gonna be a really nice roll. Um, so I like that a lot. So as far as assembly goes, it looks super, super simple. We're just gonna take the backing piece that's already pre-assembled, pop it in, decompress these little knobs here, push it in, snaps into place, good to go. And that's pretty much it, we're assembled. We're ready to roll here. Um, we do have, let's see here, water inlet is right here on this side and the water outlet is over here on this side. It's just got a little black cap on it right now. Let's go and pop that off. And I love that, guys. I love it when one inlet comes from one side and the outlet is on the opposite side. Just make it so, makes it so nothing gets tangled up. All right, so for the pressure washer gun, uh, it's super simple as well. This piece just turns right on the end here. So you just put it in, get it to seat in there well enough. And actually, we'll just use this to feed it in there. Spin the, the extension first. There it goes. And then if you want, you can get a wrench on there and torque it down, but typically that should be good. So that is ready. Um, my opinion on this. Feels a little cheap, to be perfectly honest. Feels kind of hollow. Um, so typically, this uh, trigger will just be an actual trigger and then there's a little bit of a stopping piece that you can flip up so that you can't compress this if you want it to be in a stop mode completely. But this one, instead, there's a little red, red button here that just slides through and then that locks it in place. So that's it for that. Um, again, I, I'm, I don't like it that much. Uh, it's okay, it'll do the job. But for me, I always recommend getting rid of the gun and the hose right off the bat and getting aftermarket ones that are way, way better. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the hose and gun that I like to use right now and show you guys. And then uh, we will be doing the testing with my aftermarket hose and gun. It makes no difference on the performance of the actual motor and pump itself. So it's just the accessories um, and I've tested it with a bunch of other pressure washers. It makes no difference on the pressure or the GPM. The only thing that we do need to make sure of to be, get an accurate reading for this machine specifically is we're gonna be testing it with the nozzles that it comes with. Because the little hole inside here um, is the orifice size and that is what can increase and decrease the, the pressure and also increase and decrease the GPM. The smaller the hole, the higher your PSI will be and the lower your GPM will be. Um, if you increase the size of that hole, then you drop your PSI, but you increase your water flow or the GPM. So uh, we will test it with these nozzles. We will test it with what Ryobi comes with. Ryobi's are typically really small. Um, so we'll test it with that. And then we'll see, and uh, I have some aftermarket uh, nozzles as well, up to a 3.5 millimeter. So we'll see uh, where that sits. All right, guys, so here is the aftermarket hose that I recommend to everyone. You can, um, as you can see, it is completely pliable. It's super, super noodly, really. It's just, it, it's, it doesn't kink um, easily. It doesn't tangle up easily. It's not wanting to kink. Um, you get a little pressure mark there, but that's a really tight one. And uh, you'll see in comparison to the hose that it comes with, whoops, I can't even get a grip on this slippery thing. Hose that it comes with, Kinks up really bad. So uh, let me see if I can do it side by side for you guys. So you got a hard kink right there and a nice soft one there. So this does not kink. You don't get any of those tight spots where it's um, the water's not flowing through. It does an absolutely amazing job and it's 50 feet. So it's two and a half times the length of the factory hose that this machine comes with. Um, so it just makes your life way easier. Do yourself a favor and go buy this hose. Um, I'll link it down below. You can either get this one that's blue or you can buy one from um, Flexzilla. Same construction, I've tested them side by side. Same exact construction. 
and uh, it's just in a green colorway instead. After that, this is the hose, uh, sorry, the wand that I prefer. Um, this one, I'm gonna link this down in the description for you guys. Um, there's two variants of this on the listing and this one tends to sell out sometimes, but just make sure you'll see like, one will show that it has a swivel and one won't. So this is the one you want. This one has a swivel built in. Um, and what that does is it makes it so that your hose doesn't get all twisted up behind you. It makes a big, big difference. This is a nice, robust uh, trigger and it does an absolutely fantastic job. Has the basic quarter inch quick connector on the front so all your, quick, all your nozzles will fit on this as well as the foam cannon. One last thing to note is the hose that it comes with is a 15 millimeter inner diameter fitting. The aftermarket hose is a 14 millimeter. So in order for, in order for you to get this to work without leaking, you do need to get this adapter. It's like eight bucks or something like that. Uh, but on this side, it inserts into the machine. It's a 15 millimeter. And this side reduces down to a 14 millimeter. So this fits in perfectly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this onto the machine now so you guys can see. All right, guys, so this is your water outlet. This is where you connect your, your uh, high pressure hose. So I'm just gonna take the adapter, fit it right on there, and screw it down simply and easily. There are gaskets on the inside of these uh, adapters, so you actually don't need to use any Teflon coating or anything like that. Just make sure it's nice and snug, good to go. And then now I can take my aftermarket hose, the one I love so much. I use these every day in my business. They're amazing and uh, I, can't, I, I can't recommend these things enough. So um, I'm going to pop it, this on there now. Twist that guy on. And that's it, we're all set. All right, so just a couple other things to show real quick is the gun holder uh, that it comes with built in. If you're using this factory gun, it works great. Um, let me check one thing for you guys is the gun's okay. It's not my favorite, but it's okay. Um, and I wanted to see if, let's see if I can just connect this real quick and test and see if this thing is a whew, squeaky. All right, we're gonna see if this is a 15 millimeter as well. It is. So if you were to run this gun, you're going to get it, want to get going to want to get a secondary adapter for this side as well. Or you can just quick, get quick connects and then you're set. But um, for our test, like I said, we're going to be using the aftermarket hose and the aftermarket gun. Let me go ahead and connect this back on. Um, so with this machine, though, it's got great storage. You got. And it'll work with this hose as well, but so you have a hook over here, you can hook on your power cord, super simple. And then right in the back here, it's just a little loop. So you can just pull it off. I'm just gonna put the factory hose on there right now so you guys can see, but just loops on. Oops, from this way, loops over and it holds it in place really nicely just with that little bungee. Um, that's kind of a simpler solution that I've seen. Uh, compared to other pressure washers, uh, but I think that actually probably works the best. That's a good little solution there. So we're going to go over uh, to the water um, and we're going to hook this thing up and get it tested. So I'm going to be putting my uh, pressure washer gauge right here between the hose and the gun so we can test the actual PSI. And then we will also check the GPM and see how accurate this thing is. Um, and just, yeah, so you guys have a good idea of what to expect. All right, guys, so I've got the pressure washer hooked up and powered in, um, hooked up to water and plugged in. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and take my pressure washer gauge right here. We're gonna hook it into the water hose line. And then we're gonna connect our pressure washer gun onto that. And since this unit only comes with a 15, a, a soap dispensing nozzle, a 15 degree nozzle, 25 degree nozzle and the power nozzle, um, we're gonna be testing everything with the 15 degree nozzle because I have 15 degree nozzle options in the Ryobi size as well as the 3.5 millimeter size so we can test and see what kind of results we get. All right guys, we've got it all set up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine on. With that, we will find out really quickly if it has the total stop system or if it just quiets down the, the motor. On the Ryobi unit, it doesn't completely stop, it just gets quieter. 
the motor continues to run, but at a lower RPM, essentially. Um, the DeWalt did completely stop, so we'll find out with this one. Total stop. It's completely quiet now that it's charged up. As it was building pressure, it sounded really good. Sorry about the beeping trash truck behind me. I'll wait a second. All right, he's gone. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up now and uh, test it out and see what kind of numbers we get. So here we go. If you guys can see that well enough, let me see. Hopefully you can see. Here we go. So with this nozzle, the factory nozzle that it comes with, it is getting 2,200 PSI, which is very, very fair um, to the 2,300 that they have this thing listed at. That's extremely close. I'm totally fine with that. I'm actually impressed that it's result uh, that it is performing that well. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this out real quick to the Ryobi nozzle and see if that makes a difference. So as you can see, I have this marked with an R. That's from Ryobi. And I'm assuming with those numbers that it's getting, this is probably the same size as that one. Let's just see. Interesting. So it's actually getting less. I think it's getting about 1900 PSI with this. So I haven't come across a pressure washer that came with a smaller orifice than the Ryobi's did. Um, but it looks like in this case, that might be the case. So. Go ahead and just show you guys that. Yeah, it's sitting right at 1900 PSI. I'm going to go ahead and grab a 3.5 nozzle. Just that's the highest, the, the largest orifice size that I have. We'll do that. We'll test that and see uh, what kind of PSI we get with that. Just to compare, because that will get more GPM than these ones. All right guys, so now this is a 3.5 millimeter orifice, 15 degree nozzle. I'm gonna hook this up. I'm expecting the uh, PSI to drop considerably with this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and test it real quick so I can see. Yeah, that took us all the way down to 600 PSI. Ready? So with that, I would not recommend using a 3.5. You're not gonna get the PSI you need. Um, so let's go ahead and switch over. I will still check the GPM with this, but let's go ahead and switch over and check those out. All right, guys, so this is the same way I test all of the, P uh, the GPM uh, tests for all the pressure washers. I have a little measuring bucket. As you can see, there's measuring, a little measuring graph on the side, measuring table markings, whatever. I'm just gonna go and plop that in there. I'm going to hook up the gun with the factory 15 degree nozzle that comes with this unit. So we'll go ahead and hook that up. Good to go. I have a little timer here. We're going to let it run for one minute and then that'll get us to our gallons per minute reading. And here we So with knowing the fact that this nozzle is actually smaller, smaller than the nozzle from Ryobi, I'm going to assume that this is getting, a, I don't know, they listed at 1.2 GPM and they were accurate with the PSI rating. So probably right about that 1.1 to 1.2 GPM is what I'm going to assume. And it looks like we are at, okay. Let's see here, one gallon, that's four quarts, just under four and a half quarts. So I'm gonna go with four and a half. Uh, it's barely under that. And let me just do the calculation real quick for you guys. 
All right, so four and a half quarts is 1.125 gallons. So 1.125 gallons per minute. That's kind of what I was expecting. Um, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the Ryobi nozzle now. And again, if you guys remember, this was getting 1900 PSI. Um, so I'm assuming this will bump it up probably to that 1.2 GPM mark. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and test it out. Factory nozzle coming off, Ryobi nozzle going in. Clicked in, good to go. Get the stopwatch ready. And here we go. All right. It's definitely more water at 1900 PSI, which I like. And now we are at uh, 4.75, four and three quarters, uh, four and three quarter quarts. So let's see what that is. So 1.875 GPM. Um, so I'm assuming if you go with a 2.0 nozzle, you'll probably get 1800 PSI at 1.2 GPM. Um, Cause I think, think that the Ryobi's are actually a little bit smaller than that even. Um, I have a 2.5. Let me. I'm not going to do a full test of that. I just want to see what the, the PSI is with that. All right, guys. Real quickly, here's the 2.5 millimeter orifice, 15 degree nozzle. I'm not going to test the GPM. I'm just going to test the PSI on it. All right. That's only getting us to 1,000 PSI. So. These things have to be like, I don't know, man, tiny. 1.3, 1.5 millimeters, that's really small. Um, if I were to hook that nozzle up to some of the other units I've tested in the past, it would actually trip up the motor. These are obviously tuned to make it work with that. Um, one side note is the machine does sound great. Uh, it's got a nice tone to it. it, doesn't sound like it's overworking or anything like that. So I'm gonna put this back. We're gonna test that 3.5 GPM. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the 3.5 millimeter orifice now. Again, this is only getting 600 PSI, so it's not super usable. Um, rinsing a car would be fine after you've done all your heavy lifting with a, with a more powerful nozzle that you're able to get to 1100, 1200 PSI. But this might be nice uh, because this definitely will increase our GPM. So we're gonna go ahead and test that now. Again, we're gonna run it for one minute. Oops. And here we go. All right. That didn't increase it nearly as much as I thought. We're at about five and a quarter quarts, and that's only getting us just a slight bit over 1.3 GPM. So for car detailing guys, I'm gonna say no on this unit because it just doesn't have the, the water flow that you really want. Um, so if you're using this around the house, it's a great unit. Like the, the wheels feel really good. It moves around really nicely. The storage on the unit itself is fantastic. Um, the PSI is really, really great as well. Like really strong, 2200 PSI is great. Out of an electric machine that you don't have to deal with gas and oil. It's nice and quiet, has the total stop system. Um, it's just the water flow is less than I would like it to be, but it's relatively close to what they're, they're rating it at. So um, if you're okay with those numbers of 2200 PSI at 1.1 or the advertised 2300 at 1.2, which is you know fairly accurate, um, then go ahead and get this machine. It's a great machine. It does compare to um, some of the Ryobi units, this one I think is 220 bucks. The one that looks like this from Ryobi is 300 bucks. Um, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head. Um, I do have a review on that one, so I'll link th that up here for you guys as well. Um, but just real quickly for, for the person that's wanting to get this for their home and to wash their cars on occasion, um, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up a foam cannon to it so you guys can see that and see how it works. I'm going to be using the MJJC foam cannon. I'll link that video up here. I did a full review on that. 
And because this is a lower PSI, uh, lower GPM type of a unit, electric pressure washer, I do have the orifice in the, in the foam cannon switched out to a 1.1 millimeter orifice. Now, if you guys do decide to buy a foam cannon and you get this MJJC, it's great because it comes with the 1.1 as well as a larger one. Um, if you get a cheaper foam cannon, which I will have linked down below as well, um, you're going to want to change it out to a 1.1 millimeter orifice and I will link those down in the description below too so you can do that. I'll also post a video right up here so you guys can see exactly how to switch that out. It's super easy, super easy. Yeah, really simple. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the foam cannon to show you guys how it foams and then we'll be done with this. Alrighty guys, so here's the MJJC foam cannon with the 1.1 millimeter orifice installed inside of it. Crank down, good to go. Here we go. As you can see, it does a great job with foaming. You get plenty of foam from this uh, pressure washer as long as you uh, use the 1.1 millimeter orifice. You can see it's super, super thick. It's sticking onto the car, onto the panel, um, not running off, which gives the soap a chance to do its job and really break down all the contamination that's on the paint. So that's exactly what you want. So if you're gonna go use a foam cannon with this unit, just make sure you get the 1.1 millimeter orifice. Again, that video is linked and uh, you'll be good to go. So thanks so much guys. I hope that helps you if you're considering this pressure washer. It is a good unit. It does everything that it states that it's supposed to. So you can't, you can't really go wrong. Motor sounds great. Everything looks good. The wheels are great. Thumbs up. We'll see you guys on the next one.